Hello everybody and welcome to Next Tech Local One's holiday special episode. I am so excited. We have all of our hosts together here. We're all wearing our Christmas sweaters, except for all of these we love those. Black and white. Guys, you were supposed to wear your sweaters, okay? It's black and white. What's he doing? I got it. I got it. No memo at all about it. <laughs> well, at any rate, we are here. We're going to have a blast today. We're going to go and do all sorts of different arts and crafts and, and all sorts of different things. To start off, we're going to start off with Deb and Andrea, and they're going to do some holiday delightful treats. So, Deb, Andrea, let's see what you got. Well, Andrea and I decided to collaborate this year, and together we're going to make some gift jars full, and they have a Dr. Seuss theme with the Grinch, and so we're going to make Grinch cookies to put in them first thing. And it's a very easy recipe. It only takes one cake mix. This is French vanilla, and we got Duncan Hines because it's 16 and a half ounces, and some of them are different sizes. It probably wouldn't make that much difference. Yeah, I, I didn't realize that until we did this recipe. And it specifically said Dugnet Heinz, and it said the 16.5 um, ounces. And then we were looking at cake mixes when we were buying the supplies, and sure enough, other uh, brands are slightly smaller. There's this white cake mix I do that has, it uses one white cake mix, and then you put a ton of stuff, including flour and sugar. But they had to redo it. You have to, they had to readjust the amounts you put in based upon some of the brands have reduced how much is in them. Yeah. So I'm going to, the, just those three things so far, the cake mix, a half a cup of oil, and two eggs. And then I'm going to put in about five drops of green food coloring. I think we got five, yay. And... If you are using a gel, you could maybe get by with a, just one drop. But I'm just using traditional food coloring. And we'll let this mix up. And when it's done, it has to cool. And so I'm going to put the entire cake mix inside this little container and put it in the fridge for a while. And we have some in the fridge if you want to get it out of the okay. in the top. Thanks, Andrea. Yeah. This has to cool, but we pre-made some. We have a lot of jars to do. This makes about 36 cookies, and we put about 12 cookies in a jar. So we need to make a lot. This will make three presents, and I'll get this taken care of later. In the meanwhile, let's roll them up. OK. And so we have some powdered sugar. This is a one tablespoon scoop. And it makes just the right size of cookies for the project that we're going to do. We're going to use um, a one and a half pint jar, or quart, one and a half pint jar. And it has straight up and down sides, and so the cookies fit just perfect in there. It's true. So it does matter. And then if you want 36 cookies out of them, we can get usually a little bit more. I think if we ate more of the dough, we mm -hmm. could get 36. So 36 if you eat a little of the dough, <laughs> or a little more if you're on a diet or something. We're going to get 12 on a pan, so we'll make three pans full. I really like getting a lot of the um, powdered sugar on the balls because then that when it crackles as it breaks, don't you think it really gives it that neat look? It does. So you'll want to really be generous. Oops. <laughs> yes, and you might want to wear a um, apron like Deborah and I are because boy, this powdered sugar is messy. It is, and I think these crinkle up just like the Cool Whip cookies that everyone has probably made hundreds of times. You know where you use the cake mix yeah. and a package of Cool Whip and then roll them in sugar just like this. And it, they look a lot like it. They might work the same if we just made the cool with cookies. Okay. Okay, we are going to put some red hearts in them. Because in the French story, his heart was too small. 
So we're going to put nice big hearts in it. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. and then at the end, the Grinch heart grew three sizes that day. And these little hearts that Deborah found have like a heart inside a heart. These are chai okay. hearts. I got them on Amazon. Mm -hmm. Since it is funny. Christmas season and not Valentine's Day. All right. Well, you put these in. I'll put these in the oven. And I'll get the uh, get, take the oven. And I'll taste. Okay. I'll taste the cookies. And you'll taste I'm the cookies. I'm here for tasting. All right. So, while we taste these, though, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll be in the studio with Jenny while to see how she repurposes some pallets. Your home's exterior is the best defense against harsh weather conditions. With insulated vinyl siding, energy efficient windows, spray foam insulation, and metal roofing from AquaShield Roofing and Construction, you can protect your home from howling winds and ice cold temperatures. Don't let Mother Nature interfere with the comfort of your home. Call or visit us online today for a free estimate. AquaShield Roofing and Construction, our team is dedicated to your complete satisfaction. Hi. We're looking for insurance. <laughs> Let's see who's free. Jerry? When insurance agents work for only one company, Michael! their options are simply limited. Everybody! But a trusted choice independent agent is free to shop many companies for a better deal. Free to do what's right for you. Let us shop for you. Contact Rogers & Associate to learn more. Western Auction and Real Estate LLC is ready to travel to you. Their team includes auctioneers and real estate specialists that will exceed your expectations. They offer experience in agriculture real estate, commercial and residential sales, and farm equipment auctions. Plus, they conveniently travel to your location. And it doesn't stop there. Visit westernauctionandrealestate.com today to shop their online equipment auctions too. For professionalism from concept to completion, it's Western Auction and Real Estate. The easiest way for you to get anywhere in the country is the Hayes Regional Airport. Twice daily flights between Hayes and Denver means you are only 45 minutes from over 100 direct flights to get you to your destination as quick as possible. Service from SkyWest has completely changed the flight experience out of Hayes thanks to the 50 passenger jets that include complimentary beverages and an in-flight restroom. With free parking and short security lines, there has never been a better time to use the Hayes Regional Airport. The next time you travel, check Hayes first at flyhays.com to see the time and money you could save. Thanks, Brett. We're back in the studio in Hayes. I kind of like working in a comfortable area, and this is kind of a big project, so I wanted some help, too. So Jason, backyard grilling host and cameraman extraordinaire, thank you for volunteering. So I'm used to cooking. Me. I'm not used to making crafts. So. Well, this will be a, this will be a good experience for okay. you. Go home and make one for your wife. You know. <laughs> I don't know about that. So, so I'm kind of, I've kind of lately, I've been kind of, I'm a little late to the ball game, but I kind of like the pallet stuff, kind of like the shabby chic. And um, pallets are, are free if you ask for them. Make sure you ask. And yeah. so I was looking on Pinterest because I love Pinterest, and I found this pallet Christmas tree. I was like, you know, that's pretty cute. Also, Jason, I don't like to saw. I actually don't know how, so. Well, these are a real pain to take apart anyway, so it's good that we're just leaving them together. Yeah, so, so this is really, really easy. <laughs> um, I've already done one, which we'll, we'll show you later so you can see the finished product, but really easy. So how I started, the one on Pinterest, they painted the whole thing white. And I felt like I really wanted the, the tree to kind of stand out behind, so I actually taped out what I wanted to be the outline of my tree and I painted it just with white paint and I did it kind of lightly because I wanted the wood to kind of show through. I wanted it kind to look rustic. Look. Yeah. yeah. Now the other one that I'm going to show you later, I use spray paint. It took two cans. This wood <laughs> just soaks it up like a sponge. So I would recommend probably rolling on. That was the first thing I learned that was a little bit easier. Let's put that over okay. there for me. And then after that, your next step is you're going to put your nails in. And so you start with your nail at the top of your tree, okay. and then you just go on your planks on the outside to the bottom, and then leave a couple, of, leave some space at the bottom because we're going to have a trunk there later. Okay, is this for the lights then? Yes, that's where we're going to we're going to string our lights on it, okay. and our garland, and it just kind of gives it a place to hook onto. Okay. I also this time added some nails in the middle. I didn't do that on the first one. I just thought it'd give a little more stability. So, I guess let's just show them how to do lights. Okay. Now, I love sparkly lights at Christmas. There's nothing prettier than a lot of lights. So the first one, I did one string. Okay. 
and I had a, a white string with green, uh, which I liked, but I decided for this one, I wanted the white strings and I'm gonna, I'm gonna mix it up and we're gonna okay. do two strings of light. Sounds so you wanna start with your, is this what, the female end? Yep. Okay, so you wanna put your female end at the top because we're gonna want the plug end to end up at the bottom. So Jason, this is kinda being uncooperative. Now I bought two strings and I think these are, I can't even remember the length on them. I might have to double check that. But They look about like uh, 20. 25 is what I was yep. thinking, so which will turn out about right. So I'm going to go ahead and, and start here, and I'm going to leave it just long enough so that it'll tuck back behind. And then all you do with this is you're just going to start, and it's really pretty easy, you just start going back and forth in a zigzag pattern. So... So thank you for helping me. Now I decided I wanted to use a staple gun, just kind of secured a little more because I sure. plan to use this year after year. So and it what gets I, a little windy. In you know, it is so strange that <laughs> occasionally Kansas has wind. <laughs> you guys had no idea, right? Yeah. All right. So you know, if you want to, and if you don't have a staple gun, don't worry about it. But I went ahead and just kind of wanted to secure the ends down. So now that we're done with that, you're going to pick out a garland that you like on. Um, this tree, I decided to go with beads. And it, I'm a little nervous about it because there's no structure to them. On sure. the other tree, I used a, kind of more of a wiry type of garland, but I think it's gonna work out. So the next thing, just like we just did, is we're gonna string our garland. And what I'm gonna do, and I'll come back and do this in a little bit, I'm gonna wire the first one on there, okay. just so it doesn't slip off. And this is just a little trickier when you do your next step, because you're gonna kind of work with the lights, but they also, can kind of help secure it. So we're gonna go ahead and weave our garland on. And you will take a little more time with yours. And we're just gonna get it on here. And I'm probably gonna go back and add a little wire. And hopefully your nail doesn't pull out like mine just did. Yeah. But oh. if it does, guess what? <laughs> you just put it back in. All right, so they're kind of getting the idea, Jason. Yep. I'm gonna let you finish that up. Okay. Do you want me to put and that nail back in? I think we probably need to put the nail back in, yeah. Okay. So the next part is really the fun part, in my opinion. And that's going to be decorating your tree. And you can decorate it with any colors that you like. The one that I found on the internet was silver and gold, so I kind of went traditional with the first one. Now, on the second one, I picked colors that I wanted to have, and I went with kind of a turquoise and a white and a red, and I just bought, all came together. You could get old ornaments you have at your house, whatever, but this is the kind of the look I went with. Okay. And then this takes the most time, if you're like me, because I was <laughs> kind of particular about it. So what, and I'm just gonna kind of show you the placement, and then we'll come back. You're gonna, I just bought the cheap little hooks that you would use on ornaments, but okay. what I actually did is I didn't just hook them, I closed them up on the ornament so the ornament is closed on it. And then I actually closed them around the, uh, the lights. Okay. So that way they're not going anywhere in the Kansas wind. So you kind of fastened them to the pallet with the wires to the lights then? Not to the pallet, but yes, or I fastened to, yeah. them to the lights on the pallet. So that way it can blow around, it'll be secure in the wind. And then I just kind of worked through, I wanted you know, kind of a different, I didn't want my colors to really repeat. So you kind of just start working through just like decorating Christmas tree, sure. right? No difference. So that makes it even more important to try to connect those, those lights, maybe with the staples so mm -hmm. everything stays Because they're, yeah, they're definitely your sure. anchor to the tree. Then we're going to take a, uh, finish decorating and then there's a couple last steps so I want to show you. Okay. And then we'll show you a, a finished one here in just a second, the one I've been talking about this whole time. You want these here? I do. So on the, again, the one on Pinterest, they used a pretty nice sized, um, I guess I would say log sure. for the bottom of the tree. I did not have any logs. And to you don't my, burn wood. I, I don't <laughs> burn wood. I had no logs. So I had a friend who does, and she brought me this huge stump that I was okay. like, okay, again, I don't really like to use tools. So I let my dogs play with it. They pulled all their bark <laughs> off and I was like, so that's the that your, is absolutely perfect. Yeah. So Great. what I would do with that is I just wired it to it using like okay. floral wire, choose whatever top you like. Um, could even do a lighted top if you wanted to. But for this one, I decided to try to do 
kind of a, a blingy, glittery look. I like the rustic with the, the modern. Sure. And the colors. And, and then you would just fasten that on. So well, let's go ahead. We'll just get it finished up. And um, then we'll go back to the studio. And We have a finished one at the studio, right? Yeah. And I'm going to show you what the other one looks like. And we'll tell you about how you can get a chance to win it. Cool. Thanks Thank for your help, Jason. Thanks. Welcome back to, back to Aunt Faye's Community Kitchen, guys. I'm excited to have Jenny back with us. Jenny, this is a great project. Tell us about it. Well, this is the one that I got all finished up, started on the show, finished decorating it. And then this was another example. I just wanted to show people how different ornaments, different lights, it can look completely different. And one of our lucky uh, viewers has won this one already by now, which is pretty exciting. So just take your ornaments and, and make your tree your own. That is awesome. Well, thank you very much, Jenny. Guys, we're going to take a quick break. When we get back, we'll shoot out to the grill with Jason and see what he's cooking. So we will see you shortly. If you could, what would you have in your kitchen? The quietest dishwasher? Sure. A big 28 cubic foot refrigerator? Oh, yeah. A true convection wall oven? Check. You'll find Frigidaire Professional Kitchen Appliances at Genuine Appliance in Hayes. They have all that, plus real stainless steel for fewer fingerprints and smudges. Frigidaire at Genuine Appliance at 1224 East 27th in Hayes. Your dream kitchen doesn't have to be a dream anymore. Here in the Heartland, we make things homemade with precision and care. Robin Insurance is no different. Their family creates tailored plans to keep your family safe. They are a family-owned and operated agency that also offers commercial, farm, and crop insurance. With quick, fair claims, your matter will be held professionally and with excellent customer service. Robin Insurance, the corner post of insurance since 1936. See their ad in the next tech directory. Norton County Hospital would like to welcome Dr. Greg Serene to the community. Dr. Serene is a board-certified surgeon and trained in sports medicine. His practice will focus on knee injuries, joint replacements, and general orthopedics. Dr. Serene has been practicing for over 20 years and looks forward to providing orthopedic care to Norton and the surrounding communities. The Norton County Hospital, dedicated to caring, commitment, and community. Your house is more than just a house. It's a home for your family to grow. It's a place where you feel the most comfortable and can be yourself. Shop at Paul's Furniture Company in Selden so your family can select the perfect pieces for all the rooms in your house. With over 17,000 square feet of selection, they are sure to have the styles that will please everyone, even the kids. Visit Paul's Furniture Company in Selden where they'll help you feel at home. Visit us online at paulsfurnitureco.com. Hey, thanks, Brett. We're outside here at the grill and we're gonna be making some holiday candy but it's not your traditional holiday candy. We're gonna be using some beer, a Guinness Stout beer. We're gonna be using some brown sugar, some cayenne pepper, and what would backyard grilling be without bacon? So we're gonna be using some bacon. We're gonna be making some bacon candy, or some people call it bacon crack, but we're gonna call it bacon candy today. So what we've done is I've taken a pound of thick cut bacon, and I've put it on the grill, and we've started cooking it. Uh, we'll go ahead and check it. It looks like it's about done here. What we're going to do is we're going to cook it till it's still kind of flimsy. We don't want it to be able to hold up and stay on its own. I'll show you what I mean here. We, we want it, you know, still kind of pliable. Not, we want it cooked, but not totally crispy because we're going to put our our sugar and stuff on it and that's going to crisp it up and we don't want it so cooked that it's not very good. So what we're going to do here is we've got our bacon out and bear with me it's nice and windy and chilly outside here so I'm going to go ahead and dab off some of the grease and that way when we brush it with our sugar and beer and stuff it stays on a little better. So we've got that dabbed off a little bit. Put this in my pocket. Okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a third of a cup of our Guinness Stout beer. Uh, you can use other types of beer. This is just the kind that I like to use. It, it calls for kind of a stout beer, dark beer. We're gonna do a third of a cup of it, and then I'm gonna do a half a cup of brown sugar. You can use light sugar, or you can use a dark brown sugar. I used, went ahead and used the light. 
and then we're going to sprinkle a little cayenne pepper on it just to give it a little punch when we're finished. So we've got our bacon out. I've got my mixture already kind of mixed up. And then what we're going to do is we're going to liberally apply that to our bacon once it's cooked. So we're going to go ahead and put that on and we're going to go ahead and put it on both sides. Okay, I'll tell you what, I'm going to flip it and then I'll put my cayenne pepper just on one side. Like I said, not quite your traditional holiday candy, but it is a big hit. So we'll put this on. Like I said, we're going to put it on pretty thick. And if you don't want to put it on that thick, you can put it on the grill and go ahead and kind of go back and kind of just keep adding this to it and it'll just make that sugar thicker and thicker. But I'm such a bacon fan, I like to be able to taste that bacon well in there as well. So we're gonna just put this on here pretty liberally. About like so. All right, so we've got that coated real well. Then I'm gonna just take my cayenne pepper and I'm going to lightly, which is kind of a chore in this wind, just sprinkle that on our bacon. And then when you bite into that, it's, it's, it's great because there's that, that real sweet flavor and then there's the heat. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to open back up my grill. I'm just going to use my fingers because it's easier. And I'm going to put my bacon back on. Just like so. Do a little clean up here. Okay, we've got some that I've already put on there. We'll kind of see if it's done here. And it's still going a little bit. But what's going to happen is that bacon's going to get nice and caramelized with that, with that sugar on there, and it's going to get a lot crispier, and it's, it's great. So we're going to go ahead and finish this up, and then I'll take it back in to Brett and them, and we'll be back. Make moving and storing your home or business easy with storage solutions of Hayes and Victoria. With two facilities, they can store anything from antiques to automobiles and everything in between. Interior units for items needing special care. Drive-up units of all sizes, perfect for a home or business. And outside storage for trucks, boats, and RVs. As an authorized U-Haul dealer, they have everything for your next move across town or across the country. Storage solutions of Hayes and Victoria. Making moving and storing easy. Make a difficult choice an easy one with Cedar View Assisted Living's knowledgeable and caring staff. Your loved one will be professionally taken care of as they transition into their new community. With movies, holiday parties, planned exercises and games, residents will have opportunities every day to enjoy their time at Cedar View. Multiple room styles are available, ensuring a just right fit for your loved one. Come see Cedar View Assisted Living for yourself next to Sternberg Museum. The care you need, the home you want. Bacon candy right off the grill for you. Yep. So there you, you want go. to stick around and help us? No, that's all right. All right, thanks. All right, so we are going to put together some Christmas gifts that are really simple. We put together the recipe for the Grinch cookies this morning uh, already, and and so now we're going to put together the bacon crack, and um, we have already put together these. Um, printables and these will be available with the recipes and we also have one for Christmas bacon crack so that you can put that on your jars as well. So Deborah, first thing we're going to do is I found these really nice jars. They are just a solid cylinder. There's no bubble going out and they work really great for cookies. I and so the best of all. I never yes. Before. Yes. So let's go ahead and get a dozen cookies in there and then you will want to print off your printable and on each printable there's three tickets and then there's also you can print these um, uh, jar lid toppers 
And so I will go ahead and get that started. We're going to put this, it fits just perfectly inside the jar lid. So there's that, we've got that done. Next thing I'm gonna do is take and get some ribbon for the ticket. And I gotta find my scissors here. It has the whole story of the Grinch's heart. Yep, it has the, um, just part of the Grinch story on it. It's one of my favorite Christmas stories and I had never seen Grinch cookies before. How fun is that? And then, and they have a little heart right in the middle, which makes them even more fun. Okay. Well, just try to get it close to a dozen. All right, now what we're gonna do is cut our ribbon. Okay. I'm almost ready. All right. One second. All right. Look when at there's that, when they fluffy up, the fluffy ones. Yes. Greater. Yep. All right. So there's our dozen cookies, and we've got the topper on it. And now we're just going to put our bow. Grow your heart three sizes. Oh. Probably you'll get an enlarged heart from all the sugar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we will tie. I'm such a doomsday. That must have wire. Yep, it does, which makes it even fun. And so then we have our finished product. And now we also have bacon crack. We can get and, about three of those gifts out of it. Um, I have a couple options here. And what we thought we would do is cut the bacon in half. So Deborah, why don't you cut some of the bacon in half? And all I did here was took some scrap fabric and cut it into five inch squares. And then we're How just... How many are you gonna put I, Let's just put like six. Like six half pieces? Well, well, let's see how many fit. Let's see how many fit. That's five. Now, is this safe? Does this have to be refrigerated? Yeah, I would say it needs to be refrigerated. So then what we'll do is we'll put our lid on and seal it. And I think I saw some bacon jerky somewhere, so I wondered if it would. Yeah, I would say you'd want to refrigerate these. And then you'll, this is going to be available with a recipe online on our Pinterest page. And just a really simple, easy gift. It's broke off. You better have a taste. <laughs> so All bad. right. I heard that one's pretty bad, too. Get that. Oh. Yum. So I was just wondering if you have enough to go yeah. around. Where is that? <laughs> Where's my piece? Here you go. Thank you so much. Do I get a piece? Our jars first, you mm. guys. Well, I think they're kind of. Jason can, can always yeah. make more. We can, oh yeah. <laughs> it's more important than I eat. Bacon <laughs> crack is way better. This, this is, is amazing. That's why they call it what they call it. Bacon mm -hmm. so. crack. Yep. Once you start, you can't. <laughs> 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 well, guys, there's been a blast. Thank you so much for tuning in to our mm -hmm. holiday special episode. Thank you to Ant Face Community Kitchen here in Moreland. That's where we did all of our filming today. Thank you to Ant Face Community Kitchen. Thank you to Ant Face Community Kitchen here in Moreland. That's where we did all of our filming today. Um, if you have not been here. Please make sure to make a trip. It's fantastic. It's a beautiful place. Come and enjoy this. Uh, lastly, before we leave, I think we decided that we were going to go ahead and, and sing a Christmas carol to everybody. And so I think we're going to do Joy to the World is what Jenny said she was wanting to sing. Um, so let's... I'll solve. start it. Pick a Ready? Note. Ready? One. No. No. Ready? <laughs> Guys, where are you going? <laughs> well, I guess we're not, I guess we're not singing. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys. Have a great holiday. We will see you next week on our next show. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.